All right, and welcome back to the GSMC Wrestling Lawyer Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Kind of have to move through this segment, kind of have to put it into hyper overdrive here. We have my boy Emran's GSMC Soccer Podcast starting in about 14 minutes. So if you're a fan of soccer or just trying to get into it, it's going to be, sorry, excuse me, off the hook. It's going to be awesome. Uh, so make sure you guys stay tuned for that. Do not change that dial do not touch that mouse do not touch your um your laptop so now let's talk about our wednesday's uh weekly wrestling news but of course before that we have a, another chat by my man anthony mazano uh no i'm not saying it happens tonight this is a slow burn uh situation of darby turning bad because he feels underappreciated and that's probably the best booking you could do with this darby alley character right now because right now he kind of you, know, you don't really know what to do with him. And this slow burn and the moment that you can, you know, you let this, you let this tension, you let this, uh, this animosity boil up. And, you know, for Darby, because that was the main reason why he was kind of feuding with uh, Brody King and his match at Wrestling Dream. He was like, I'm the face of AEW and you got jealous. And I got to be honest, when I saw that promo, I was kind of thinking to myself, I was like, dude, is he really the face of AEW? He's definitely a you know the like a new flavor in terms of you know what to watch and how to watch Dynamite Collision and Rampage, but is he really like the face of it though? Like I don't I don't know. I thought ultimately that I was like you know that's uh, maybe could possibly be a foreshadowing to a to a storyline like where he, where he feels underappreciated. Obviously, John Moxley did get that match uh, from Tony Khan about him putting his title on the line, but uh, you know Darby Allen he's a badass man, so you know. I uh, would be interesting to find out what's going to happen with his character next. All right, weekly runs Wednesday wrestling news. Rhea Ripley is out for an undisclosed amount of time. Her orbital socket, her right eye is fractured, and uh, you know, the, you know, real injury issues. Maybe this could possibly be her, you know, her elbow, you know, acting up again. Um, you know, obviously playing kayfabe to the, you know, to the Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez, you know, attack. And, um, you know, right now on Monday Night Raw, it's it kind of seems ultimately that Rhea Ripley is, you know, just floating around the Raw roster in the women's division until she gets her title back. So this could possibly be a way for Liv Morgan to open up new rivalries to kind of have somebody like EO Sky maybe challenge her, kind of somebody like um, like Lyra Valkyria, because if Rhea Ripley was still in the picture, you kind of would have to ultimately overstep and kind of, you know, step over Rhea Ripley where, you know, where in fact Rhea Ripley is probably one of the best wrestlers in the women's division, so dominant. She's not really that easy to be like, oh, we're going to have someone lose to uh, you were gonna have Ray Ripley lose to this and that and the other. You know, you kind of, you know, be like, do you have you seen Ray Ripley? Have you seen, you know, the you know her reaction from the fans? We have to have outside interference. We just have to. We have to. We have to. And you know, this kind of ultimately eliminates it. And you know, trying to promote a lot of, uh, you know, this could definitely be opening up the window for returns from Oscar, also returns from Alexa Bliss. Uh, you know, taking on Liv Morgan, that would be a pretty badass match. And I, I I just feel like it's at this point, you know, Rhea Ripley, the moment she challenges for the title again, which I don't think is going to happen. I got to be honest, I don't really see anybody winning winning the Women's Royal Rumble besides Rhea Ripley. Like, of course, maybe there might be a couple of um, you know, a couple of wild card. You know, obviously, if you guys in the chat have a couple of suggestions of who could win the Women's Royal Rumble, make sure you let me know. Or maybe that's when Becky comes back. You know, she could become a two time Royal Rumble winner, maybe. I don't know. I've, I'm not too sure about that, actually. You know, I definitely don't want Charlotte Flair to win. Definitely don't want her to win. That suck. Uh, <laughs> maybe somebody from NXT that's you know that's uh, making their way on the Raw roster, SmackDown roster. Maybe maybe uh, something absolutely taboo and forbidden, where you had Jordan Grace win uh, the Women's Royal Rumble would be um, would be pretty interesting. But uh, I don't know. Should be uh, should be pretty crazy. Should be pretty crazy. All right, so uh, oh, sorry, excuse me. Our next news story: we have Liv Morgan inks a new contract, confirms that her WWE contract on an episode and a podcast of The Impulsive with Logan Paul. She recently signed a five-year deal with WWE, so congratulations! Obviously, throwing 
throwing flowers to Liv Morgan, obviously, you know, uh, you know, not too, not, not too familiar, but Liv Morgan was a, you know, she was approached and she, you know, kind of, uh, you know, talked to a WWE executive when uh, they found themselves at a Hooters and where she was actually working, which was kind of crazy. But, you know, she ultimately felt like, you know, her working there kind of opened up her personality a little bit, kind of got her to kind of, you know, uh, you know, train on the side, you know, kind of, you know, Kind of being that, you know, the total package and stuff like that. Like, you know what I mean? Just because you're working, you know, uh, you know, a restaurant job doesn't necessarily mean you're going to have to be there for the rest of your life. So, you know, Liv Morgan, obviously, you know, she made herself a WWE superstar. So that's uh, definitely admirable. That's super cool. Obviously, like, uh, you know, I'm not too sure. Like, I'm, like I, I don't hate Liv Morgan. I don't. I'm just not really that that hot on her. I think she's better... Uh, I think she's better a championship a championship chaser than she is a championship title holder, you know, because the only reason why you've seen her, you know, win matches is because of cheating. Kind of reminds me of like once when Kevin Owens had his uh, Universal Championship run where ultimately, yeah, dude, you had the biggest prize in the sports entertainment industry. Congratulations. But at the same time, you know, you were just losing credibility. You were losing stock in your character because you kept, you know, you, didn't, you can't really win a match by yourself, bro. So at the end of the day, you kind of ultimately have to uh, kind of bet on yourself and win an actual match, which, um, you know. Which Liv Morgan could definitely do. Like maybe you can have a shocking victory uh, against Oscar or Alexa Bliss or maybe hell even uh, Charlotte Flair. But you know you don't really see any of that happening without any outside interference. And I know that plays to the heel factor because that's what a heel does. But um, I don't know. I feel like Liv Morgan wants a little bit more. You know, I feel like she wants to have that respect of the world champion, but then also kind of have that reputation of being like, you know, this, this heel where, you know, at the end of the day, you can have somebody watch your back and, uh, you know, totally kick some ass. Next we have Cody Rhodes uh, wants his time in AEW wants to look back at the memories as good memories, obviously in terms of rumors, basically saying that there was some tension between him and the elite and the young bucks and Tony Khan, you know, just, to, you know, wanted to clear up the air, obviously, you know, Cody Rhodes seems like he's a good dude. Um, I did watch, um, I think it was, a, you know, the behind the, like, kind of like a behind the music in terms of like wrestling and, you know, I was talking about him and what exactly went down in AEW. Um, I feel like Cody Rhodes, he, you know, he started AEW. A lot of people were shocked because he kept going. He was on air talking constantly that he'll, the old WWE never, I'm going to finish my career in AEW. Obviously then Bruce Pritchard, you know, approached him, you know, Triple H, Paul Levesque. And it was just like one of those things where it was like, you know what, at the end of the day, you kind of have to do what's right for yourself. Like, you know what I mean? Then you get, uh, then you get to win back-to-back -back Royal Rumbles and headline the greatest WrestleMania in uh, recent history, you know, taking down the tribal chief. And, you know, obviously, you know, when in terms of success, you know, no matter how you get it, you know, at the end of the day, he said he wants to make sure that, you know, the other guys as well kind of look back at their time and be like, you know, that, you know, definitely love and respect Cody Rhodes. And I feel like that's, uh, I feel like that is, uh, you know, that is partially the thing. I feel like that's, you know, hasn't really changed. All right, next we have a former WWE 24-7 champion, retire Tucker, a.k.a. Levi Cooper, has retired from professional wrestling. Obviously, you saw him with, uh, you know, with Heavy Machinery. They were great. And NXT called up. Otis won the Bunny in the Bank. And then Tucker was kind of left in the dust. And they didn't necessarily even have... A few. They didn't get to wrestle each other after that, which was kind of mm, kind of pointless, kind of stupid. Uh, so obviously, one of the the victims of storylines back when you know back in the you know the Vince McMahon two thousand and uh, you know two thousand eighteen to like two thousand twenty one two thousand twenty two. You know storyline writings where it's just like, man, that poor bastard. Like I'm just kidding. No, it was like, man, this poor guy. You know, obviously a lot of other uh, wrestlers kind of suffered that same fate too. But, you know, good luck to uh, Levi Cooper and his future endeavors. Now we have AJ Styles talking about his TNA uh, Hall of Fame, uh, you know, decline. You know, um, kind of kept it G, kind of kept it OG being like, you know what? Uh, WWE really didn't have anything to do with that because, to be honest, that's what a lot of fans 
uh, ultimately thought they were like, how could WWE doing a collaboration with NXT and TNA and not be, you know, not let TNA have the satisfaction of having AJ Styles be inducted into the Hall of Fame. AJ Styles, you know, cleared it up being like, you know what, I did not take that Hall of Fame induction uh, seriously because I'm not done with professional wrestling, you know. So um, obviously you've seen Rhino being inducted. He's still wrestling. So maybe there might be some different criteria in, you know, how exactly you become a total nonstop action impact Hall of Famer. So, you know, definitely got to, you know, you got to love, respect AJ Styles injured right now. You know, a couple of months, hopefully not more than six, which would be, you know, kind of detrimental to his career. But, uh, you know, maybe he kind of took this as an insult. Maybe, perhaps. I'm not too sure. I wouldn't. I feel like, you know, I feel like, dude, like, why not? That'd be badass. He did so much good in TNA. Next, we have AEW uh, basically officially uh, officially announcing, you know, AEW wrestling, Wrestle Max, Wrestle Max, and stuff like that. You know, finally, uh, you know, not really seeming a little bit too, you know, too obli- not oblivious. That's not the right word kind of like hidden or secretive about the deal. You know, I feel like, you know, Tony Khan, he's basically a step away from being like, you know what? Yeah. They're like, we got this, like, we got this. We're going to have so much more. We're going to have so much press. We're going to have so much more uh, ticket sales and it's going to be great. And I feel like they deserve it a thousand and ten percent. It's going to be cool. Um, you know, you're going to have Dynamite Collision will stream on the Warner Brothers Discovery owned uh, HBO Max next year. Pay-per-views as well, expected to be available on at a discounted price. And that that is honestly number one hurrah. You know, a, the best thing about AEW, you know, I love I love Dynamite. I do love Dynamite. Rampage and eh, Collision and... Eh. But you know their PLEs are absolutely phenomenal. It's my style of wrestling. All the all the belts are up for grabs. You have you know eight nine matches on the main card. Then you have four pre show matches. I, I like all the wrestling. I think it's I think it's super cool. I, you know I'm uh, you know they they've gotten a lot of scrutiny in the past of having you know maybe having too many matches. You know so the fans kind of snooze in and out of it. But I like it. I think it's great. And the, you know every single PLE they have, you know they have an amazing main event lined up. And the major problem that was, you know, this the PLEs was, you know, spending like fifty bucks on YouTube or Bleacher Report. Like you know what I mean? It's it'd be nice to kind of have like a, you know, kind of have like a Peacock subscription where you can watch WWE Crown Jewel. You know, um, so now you're gonna get that. Hopefully that same, uh, you know, that same treatment or environment that Tony Khan is ultimately looking to bestow on having a lot more fans come closer to AEW by um, by ultimately, you know, uh, signing up to the streaming service that is Max. So I, it can only do great things. And it, and it is going to do great things. It's going to be great for them. So, you know, definitely love and respect. Definitely love that. It's super cool. Kenny Omega is set to appear at New Japan Professional Wrestling Power Struggle. You know, he got to a career, you know, uh, an injury where he was like, you know, I don't know where my career is going to go about this. A lot of people actually, you know, they kind of, you know, they died, you know, by, uh, you know, in the wrestling ring or, you know, after, you know, kind of having this, uh, kind of having this, you um, Damn it, kind of having this disease or, you know, having this medical operation or medical dispute or whatever. And, you know, now he's coming back to the square circle. He's training, which is cool because Kenny Omega is one of the most respected wrestlers. And, you know, he's an international wrestling sensation. Randy Orton reveals, uh, you know, the mostly, you know, unlikely is the playlist when he works out. He said he loves it when, uh, you know, women rappers are just, uh, you know, pounding his ear when he's doing reps. You know, he's talking about uh, Cardi B. He's talking about Nicki Minaj. He was also talking about, you know, Sexy Red. So ultimately, you know, it comes to a shock, but I, I love that. I think that's badass. I think that's super cool. The Legend Killer is also, uh, you know, the doctor of thugonomics. I'm just kidding. No. <laughs> Um, but anyways, hope hopefully you guys enjoyed my show. Thank you guys so much. Gotta wrap this up real quick. Emron Soccer Podcast is started in one minute, so get ready for that. Thank you so much for tuning in to the GSMC Wrestling Lori Podcast brought to you by the GSMC Sports Network. Follow us on Twitter, slash X, Instagram, TikTok, and Facebook for more content and updates. And like I said, if I've not made you a wrestling fan by now, we have all these other amazing podcasts that you guys should check out. Once again, hope you guys had an amazing, beautiful Wednesday. Enjoy your Thursday. I'll see you tomorrow night. Stay beautiful, but most importantly, love you.